So, uh, as I said, we're going to be going over a, a, a brief view, a review of filtering. So we'll start with the uh, most basic uh, concepts. And of course, first of all, there is the uh, ideal low pass filter. So we have here the um, frequency response, just the amplitude of the frequency response. We assume it has zero phase response. And low pass filter centered on DC has a certain bandwidth indicated here by FU for the upper frequency. Uh, the impulse response is the Fourier transform of this rectangle, which of course gives a sync function. We could have also an ideal bandpass filter. They're called ideal filters because they're perfectly square. And they may not be realizable, but they're, they're used as good approximations uh, for certain situations. I want to point out something directly coming from uh, Fourier analysis. Fourier analysis says, and the examples we have here are a triangular function and its Fourier transform, which is the sinc squared function. Here we have the sinc squared function in the time domain at the top. And in the bottom, we ha excuse me, on the right, we have the Fourier transform of this, uh, which is um, a triangle. And by duality, we know that if we uh, instead started out as the triangle in the time domain and the frequency domain, we would have the sinc squared function. And so, so it is a, not a coincidence that in this example, in one domain, we have a function with infinite support. And in the transform domain, we have a, a function with finite support. For instance, when we have the sync function in the time domain, it has infinite time duration, whereas in the frequency domain, it has a finite bandwidth. Of course, by duality, if we did the opposite, uh, one would, the, in the time domain, we have a, a time-limited signal, but we have infinite uh, frequency terms in the frequency domain. And this is a general result from Fourier analysis, that one cannot have, at the same time, a time-limited signal and a band-limited signal. Okay, so we live in the real world, which means that a signal is limited in time. I don't go to the lab and wait for infinity of time to generate my pulse. No, I'm there for, for a while, and the, the, the signal is definitely time limited. So that means it cannot be bandwidth limited. It has infinite bandwidth. Of course, in reality, none of my measurement equipment have infinite bandwidth which means that anything I measure is going to have finite bandwidth. So there's this sort of incontournable result from the mathematics saying that uh, if all my signals that I have in the lab are going to be of infinite bandwidth. And that's just not, not quite right. Uh, well, even if mathematically they are of infinite bandwidth, practically, uh, the bandwidth, the frequency response becomes very small uh, for large bandwidth. And, and I want to have some way of quantifying this fact that, uh, uh, that somehow the bandwidth is, is less wide if I have uh, a faster spectral roll-off. And for that reason, uh, we talk about bandwidth of, of signals even if they're uh, theoretically have infinite bandwidth. And so that comes to the question of how do we quantify bandwidth? Because there's no strict mathematical definition. The strict mathematical definition would give us infinite bandwidth. 